Uh, my name is Mike Rathbone and I worked at the National Film Unit from 1975 to 1990, which was 15 years. I went in there as a camera assist, which is the very lowest of the low, and gradually I learnt new skills there, and things like focus puller, clapper loader, and then became an assistant cameraman, which I was for a number of years, because until a cameraman dies or moves on, you don't get a space to be able to take over their job. So I did work as a camera operator quite often for large jobs, but for small jobs, usually I was assisting a camera, at least one camera operator, and a director and a sound recordist was our kind of standard crew. And then you have other people like grips and gaffers, makeup, wardrobe, that sort of thing, depending on how big the job was. The NFU at Miramar was pretty amazing. It was like a small family. There was probably 90 to 110 people there. Um, and we were quite a close-knit group and we had a lot of experienced people there. Um, and as beginners, we found that if, as long as we just approached people and said, what do you do and tell me about this, we'd get a lot of information back. Um, and, and Miramar was quite interesting in that it had a few main buildings, but it also had a number of houses. And like the camera house, it had all the, all the bedrooms were converted to offices. So that was a camera department. There was one house. And then you jump through a hole in the hedge, and that was the accounts department. And then down, so there was a whole row of houses, which was really neat. And there were no egos in the place. You could learn as much as you could from a, gri a grip and a gaffer as you could from one of the directors or producers. It was just the way it worked. It was pretty amazing to have everything shifted out to a new building and it was quite a different feel really. You didn't have that family feel because most people had their own offices. So each director usually had their own office and so on. So there's a lot of corridors and levels. But quite different, but purpose built. So the camera department was pretty amazing and you could go in there and set up for any number of jobs and not be in anybody else's way. We were on location a lot, probably there would be six assistants at the time and we were probably away two weeks out of the month and would often be travelling, um, really long hours because as an assistant you'd generally spend another two hours in the evening unloading mags and doing neg neg the reports for the lab and you'd note down anything that you felt was useful for the laboratory to follow up on. and so. Um, you'd do those, reload the mags, check and clean the cameras ready for the next day and then you'd often be ready to go an hour before because you had to load the vehicles um, and then we'd often be required to drive. So you did everything and um, so pretty long days but a real challenge and really enjoyed. We just loved, we just loved it. We were down there for six weeks and the crew was the cameraman a director who was also a cameraman, that's bad, um, a sound recordist to myself as the assistant. And because the director wanted to shoot as well, I was basically assisting for two operators. So I was pretty busy. And in Antarctica, it's in summer season, it's daylight, 24 hours, seven days a week. So you go down there to Scott Base, which is where we worked from, and there'd be a scientific team going out. So you'd go out with them, film whatever they're doing, come back, Somebody else would be going out, so you think, well, I can't miss that. So you go out, and we did that for about two or three days, and often we're out in the helicopters, and the Americans provided support, usually in Iroquois, and you'd be flying along and you'd just fall asleep. And then you suddenly wake up and think, oh, what amazing scenery, and then you'd sort of carry on again. When we went to silent, silent cameras, we had the 30, Aeroflex 35BL, and I mentioned that we, they were worth over $200,000 each, and the film unit had the only two in the Southern Hemisphere for quite some years. We did a film called Coal Valley, and we took one of the BLs down with us, and we filmed a number of interviews, and we put the camera back in its case, its aluminium case, and I was passing it to a sound recordist, and as I did, one of the pins snapped off the handle, and he went to grab it, and I did, and we both missed and it slid down the shingle scree in its case. We were running after it, trying to get it. 
and then it dropped over this cliff. And there was like silence for a few seconds, and then bang, crash, wallop, as it hit rocks and trees. And we ran all the way down to it, which took about an hour, not my finest hour. And we found the case it was all dented, but the lid was still closed, which was really important. So I opened it up, and the camera was still where it was, because it's all held by foam baffles. But it had a metal mat box on the front, which had come off, and it had been smashing all around the front of the camera, and just totaled both of the pieces. We couldn't fix it, because we were way up in miles from nowhere in this coal mine. So I had to phone the film unit and say a couple of things. Um, we have to send the camera back because we've damaged it and we can't fix it. And um, can you send us the other one? <laughs>I look at some of the earlier stuff and it's a bit cringe really and then I look at some of the other stuff and I think it's really important that people see it because some of it's as, as relevant today as it ever was when we filmed it and the water cycle is one film that and it's still screened in schools today and it's still just as relevant it's all about the environment um, and there are some films they may I didn't work on it but they did an underwater one um, about Pew Pew Springs out of Nelson and that's just amazing. The water will never be as clear as that anywhere else in the world. I think it's really important. People do need to look back in time as well as looking forward and try and learn from the past. And some of those films where a lot of work went into them to, and to preserve them is pretty neat.